Hepatic encephalopathy is a neuropsychiatric syndrome which is caused by liver disease. And it most often results from high gut protein or acute metabolic stress such as gastrointestinal bleeding, infection, electrolyte abnormality, patient with portal systemic shunting. As it progresses, confusion is followed by coma. Confusion needs to be differentiated from delirium tremens and one case encephalopathy and coma from subdural hematoma which can occur in alcoholics after fall. Features of hepatic encephalopathy include change in intellect, a change in personality, emotions, and consciousness with or without neurological signs. There are two broad categories of hepatic encephalopathy, that's the covert hepatic encephalopathy and the overt hepatic encephalopathy. The covert is particularly associated with poor outcomes. Hepatic encephalopathy is also classified in three types based on the disease state of the liver. That is the type A hepatic encephalopathy which is associated with acute liver failure. Type B is associated with polysystemic bypass with no intrinsic hepatocellular disease. And type C is associated with cirrhosis and hypertension or polysystemic shunts. Polysystemic encephalopathy may occur in fulminant hepatitis caused by viruses, drugs, and toxins. It mostly occurs in cirrhosis or at chronic disorders when the extensive polysystemic collaterals have developed as a result of portal hypertension. Encephalopathy also follows portal systemic anastomosis, such as surgically created anastomosis connecting the portal vein and vena cava or the portal cava shunts, transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunting, known as the TIPS. The degree of encephalopathy can be graded from grade 0 to grade 4, depending on the features and is useful in assessing response to the therapy. When on an episode develops acutely, a precipitating factor can be found, and the earliest features are very mild and easily overlooked, but as the condition becomes more severe, apathy, inability to concentrate, confusion, disorientation, drowsiness, slurring of speech, and eventually coma develops. Conversions sometimes can occur in these patients. A examination usually shows a flapping tremor known as asterixis, inability to perform simple mental arithmetic tasks or to draw objects such as a star that is known as constrictional apraxia. And as the condition progresses, hyperreflection predatory exchange and plantar responses develop. Hepatic encephalopathy rarely causes focal neurologic signs, and if these are present, other causes must be sought. Fetal hepaticas or a sweetie mastidoa to the bread is usually present but more a sign of liver failure and polar systemic shunting than the hepatic encephalopathy. Rarely, a chronic hepatic encephalopathy known as hepatocerebellar degeneration gives rise to variable combination of cerebral dysfunction, Parkinsonian syndrome, spastic paraplegia, and dementia. We have the West having classification of system for grading the symptoms. The grade 0, this minimal hepatic encephalopathy, lack of detectable changes in personality or behavior, minimal changes in memory, concentration, intellectual function, and coordination, as the exist is absent. In grade 1, this trivial lack of awareness, shortened attention span, impaired additional subtraction, hypersomnia, insomnia or inversion of the sleep pattern, euphoria, depression or irritability and mild confusion, slowing or inability to perform mental tasks. Great to this liturgy or apathy, disorientation, inappropriate behavior, slurred speech, obvious asterisks, drowsiness, liturgy, gross deficits and ability to perform mental tasks, obvious personal changes and inappropriate behavior and intermittent disorientation usually regarding time. The great tree, the somnolent lunch but can be aroused, Unable to perform mental tasks, disorientation about time and place, and marked confusion, amnesia, occasionally feeds of rage, and present but incomprehensible speech. Grade 4 days coma with or without response to painful stimuli. Hepatic encephalopathy is thought to be due to disturbance of brain function provoked by circulating neurotoxins, which are normally metabolized by the liver. Most affected patients have evidence of liver failure and portal systemic shunting of blood, but the balance between these varies from individual to individual. Some degree of liver failure is a key factor as portal systemic shunting of blood alone hardly ever causes encephalopathy. 
The neurotoxins causing encephalopathy are unknown, but they are thought to be mainly nitrogenous substances which are produced in the gut, at least in bats, by bacterial action. These substances are normally metabolized by the healthy liver and excluded from the systemic circulation. Ammonia has traditionally been considered as an important factor. The recent interest has focused on gamma aminobutyric acid as a mediator along with octopamine, amino acids, metacaptones and fatty acids which act as neurotransmitters. The brain in sclerosis may also be sensitized to other factors such as drugs which can precipitate hepatic encephalopathy. And the disruption of the function of the blood-brain barrier is a feature of acute hepatic failure and may lead to cerebral edema. The precipitating factors. In patients with chronic liver disease, acute episodes of encephalopathy are usually precipitated by reversible causes. And the most common causes are the following. Metabolic stress, such as infection, electrolyte imbalance, especially hypokalemia, dehydration, use of diuretic drugs, disorders that increase gut protein, such as gastrointestinal bleeding, high protein diet, and non-specific cerebral depletions such as alcohol sedatives and analgesics. The diagnosis of a hepatic encephalopathy can be made clinically, but when doubt exists, an electroencephalogram shows the fuse slowing the normal alpha waves with eventual development of delta waves. The arterial ammonia is usually increased in patients with hepatic encephalopathy. However, increased concentration can occur in absence of clinical encephalopathy, rendering this investigation of little diagnostic value. The principle of treatment is to treat or remove precipitating causes and suppress the production of neurotoxins by bacteria in the bowel. The dietary protein restriction is rarely needed and is no longer recommended as a first-line treatment because it is unpalatable and can lead to worsening nutritional status in non already malnourished patients. Lactose at the dose of 15 to 30 ml three times a day is increased gradually until the bowels are moving towards daily. And this produces an osmotic laxative effect, reducing the pH of the colonic content, therefore limiting colonic ammonic absorption and promotes the incorporation of nitrogen into the bacteria. Rivaxamin 400 mg three times daily is a well tolerated, non absorbed antibiotic, which acts by reducing the bacterial content of the bile and has been shown to be effective. This rivaxamin is usually provided to neomycin as neomycin is an amino glycoside which can precipitate autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Rifaxamine can also be used in addition or as an alternative to lactose if diarrhea becomes troublesome. Sedation depends encephalopathy and should be avoided whenever possible. Chronic or refractory encephalopathy is one of the main indications for the liver in transplantations and zinc supplementation is sometimes helpful.